Well, initially, um, it was uh, very upsetting because uh, I got the cancer at the same time my daughter was born. So the idea of um, uh, the prognosis was very poor. Uh, <clears throat> so it was emotionally very upsetting, not because of the dying, but because of my daughter. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, but I was... Uh, I uh, had a very good response to the chemotherapy, and that only happens in about 7% of the cases. So I was very lucky. But then the depression came. Well, I got uh, so... Uh, there were so many treatments, and since I have a scientific background, I got very preoccupied with researching everything, you know, micromanaging. And... Um, <clears throat> So my life just kind of got narrower and narrower. I got more exclusively focused on the cancer. And uh, uh, I uh, became more withdrawn. Uh, finally, my uh, daughter and friends uh, sort of told me that I needed to do something. So I tried a couple uh, antidepressant medications briefly. And I did counseling once or twice. Um, and being a psychologist, I probably didn't give them enough time because, you know, psychologists are supposed to know it all. And, uh, but, uh, there was no lasting effects from any of that. So, um, um, well, I ha had for years thought about maybe trying, uh, LSD or psilocybin, but I knew what the risks were. And so I didn't want to try it unsupervised. And as it turned out, it was a good thing because the initial experience on the, on the psilocybin was very frightening. So um, it was a combination of, of uh, having some confidence that psilocybin would pop me out of the depression and, uh, and then also my professional curiosity. But I had no previous experience with... Uh, uh, psychedelics, so I didn't know what to expect exactly. The in, the induction or the beginning of the effects start in about 10 minutes. And, um, and what happens is that things that are normally familiar, uh, both uh, uh, things in the room and uh, just feelings, all of a sudden they start feeling unfamiliar. And it's uh, like your brain is going offline, you know, one part at a time. And so for the first hour and a half, it was, it was pretty frightening because I was fighting it. I was resisting. I wanted to open my eyes and make things snap back into place. If the, I didn't have the help of the people there, I would have left the room and tried to walk around and get things to focus back in again, you know, to look familiar again. Um, but, uh, so I think, uh, had I not had the help, uh, I, I would have, I would have missed the op, I would have missed the experience, the therapeutic experience, and I might've hurt myself. So the, uh, supervision I think is very important that it be done properly. Yeah. After about an hour and a half, um, I had no sense of time, but they told me that after an hour and a half, I calmed down. And I seemed quite tranquil and comfortable. My experience inside my head was of being uh, uh, just in a void. I had no sensory experience, no sounds, no... Uh, there were no thoughts going across my mind. Uh, I had just a little bit of a visual sensation, but it was all in my head. I didn't have my eyes open. Um, and... Um, at one point, I thought I might be in a cathedral, and uh, I thought that it might be a good chance to talk with God. <laughs> so I, you know, just in my mind, I said, well, you know, if there was ever a good time, this is it. So, you know, talk to me. <laughs> and nothing happened. I did it again, and nothing happened. Um, but mostly, uh, there was just an, expense, an experience of familiarity or tranquility. And uh, 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 just a, a very uh, 
a very comfortable feeling, but there were no things, no things of any kind in it. No other people, no architecture, no uh, ideas for the most part, no... Uh, there was nothing left over from the everyday reality that was in that space. Just a feeling of presence, just, a, just, just being there and being comfortable. And I could go back and forth. I could voluntarily either uh, fall back into the void or I could come out and stay more focused on the everyday reality. And during that time, I could pull up past relationships or current relationships and look at them in great detail. And um, uh, um, it was as if I was, um, sorry. Yeah. It was as if I was looking at them with no ego. I could look at them objectively. So there were tears associated with that. And, uh, but also uh, a number of insights that uh, stayed with me afterwards. Uh, so the depression itself lifted, uh, except for a day to a week, you know, just a few days. I might fall into a depression, but I can pull myself out of it pretty easily. So for all practical purposes, the depression has lifted, and that was the goal of the study, of course. But there have been a lot of other effects. Uh, it seems to have uh, changed the way that my mind uh, uh, processes things. Uh, I've gone from micromanaging things, uh, being controlling, to uh, being uh, trusting intuition, much more spontaneous. Um, I uh, <clears throat> uh, much more sociable. Um, I don't set a lot of goals for myself anymore because I used to get trapped in those goals. You know, I'd decide I have to finish them. You know, I might spend a year or two years or three years trying to finish a goal that I'd set out for myself. Now I just kind of have values. I kind of have general directions, things that are important to me. But if uh, I'm very flexible, if something's not working, I'm, I can switch gears. I don't get trapped by the goal. Yeah, it's, uh, it's almost unbelievable that after one day and not any follow-up medications or anything, that this could happen. Uh, I have my own sort of intellectual idea about that, which I won't tell you about unless you want to hear it. <laughs> uh, but I think the difference is that it, uh, in my own personal experience, it fundamentally changes the way you approach the world so then as time goes by and you're interacting with the world, your interaction with the world is more productive. So you're, you're opening out instead of narrowing down into a negative spiral, a self-preoccupation. And uh, so I think the lasting effect is because a intuitive side to your mind is opened up and there's a, a more fullness of functioning in the brain. I, I, easily got uh, a much wider focus and I wasn't just focused on cancer anymore. I still focus on the cancer, but I, don't, I just do what I can do instead of pushing it so hard. Um, you know, it got to the point where I was becoming more of an expert on my cancer than the doctors were. And I don't do that anymore. Uh, I just, once I've read the literature once, I drop it and just, um, you know, uh, and I'm much more involved with people. I have more uh, friends now than I have time for, and I have my boats, and I have my daughter who's moving in in two months. I mean, is going to be here for two months before she goes off to college. And so I am just have a level of energy and enthusiasm I didn't have before. It's just dramatically changed my life from one of kind of a struggle and an intensity uh, a lot of work to a, a real spontaneity and a real sense of freedom that I don't have to work at it. I just have to show up and be myself 
and let my brain do what it can do when it's fully functioning. So I would say that's the core result. And then everything else is kind of a spin-off from that. 